Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight, coming to you live on CGTN. I'm Tian Wei. Chinese agronomist, agronomist and academician Yuan Longping, globally known for his work on groundbreaking hybrid rice, passed away on Saturday at the age of 91. Throughout his life, Yuan Longping buckled down to seminal rice research, ultimately helping ease both national and global hunger. In China's case, hybrid rice feeds nearly one-fifth of the global population, with less than 9% of the world's arable land. Outside China, Yuan's team trained over 14,000 technicians in hybrid rice planting methods in more than 80 developing countries, helping stave off famine. People across the world expressed condolences over the passing of China's father of hybrid rice. In past few decades, Yuan and his peers laid the bedrock of modern agriculture, a vital legacy of the next generation could build on. What's likely the next big thing for agricultural research was in store for global food security and efforts to end global hunger. Let's loop in our panelists. <music> For Yuan's legacy with hybrid rice and the future of agriculture in Beijing, Zhang Chuanhong, associate professor from the Chinese Agriculture University, also in Beijing, Shiyan, executive director of the Shared Harvest, joining us via Skype. Welcome to both of you ladies. Uh, wonderful to talk to you. Uh, of course, that was sad news, but uh, his life, Mr. Yuan's life, is very much celebrated around the world. Mr. Zhang. Mr. Zhang. Hi, Tianwei. Yes. So what do you make of that? Um, you know, um, Professor Yuan started his research on hybrid, hybrid rice in early 1960s. This is uh, really something, you know, remarkable. It contributed greatly to not only the food security in China, but also the food security in the world. And this is a something really a great breakthrough in, in the history of uh, rice breeding. And if we look at his autobiography, we can see, you know, he started this work in early 1960s, not until 1973, you know, the first rice variety was uh, found and started to be cultivated. He was dubbed as father of hybrid rice mm -hmm. in 1974 and then from since then you know that the the hybrid rice variety was widely planted in china and due to this great work you know he was served as the chief consultant of the world uh, united nations food and agriculture organization during that period of time, you know, the hybrid rice variety was introduced to many countries. Right. The acreage of rice breeding has been greatly increased, um, and which also helped people all over the world to achieve food security and peace. Right. Certainly his legends uh, will be very much uh, remembered. But on the other side, uh, Ms. Shi, he is part of those revolution, which is called the Green Revolution. Uh, it's not him alone that are doing research about hybrid rice, but many scientists around the world it combined it with, you know, the uh, irrigating system, the use of fertilizers, uh, the governance system of farming, modern farming. All of this are contributing to the eventual success of agricultural revolution we have seen during the 1970s and 60s uh, onward. Uh, Ms. Shi, so how do you see uh, Professor Yuan in such a bigger context worldwide? Uh, hi, Tianwei. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, um, uh, Yuan, Yuan's contribution to the uh, output of the uh, uh, hybrid rice is, uh, is uh, especially uh, imp very important for that period of time. Because, you know, at that time, it's, uh, I think it's an uh, important uh, period, especially for China's uh, industrialization and also urbanization. So at that time, I think the most important thing for Chinese agriculture and some parts of the world agriculture is to increase the productivity of the, all the 
uh, all the greens, uh, including rice and wheat, and also um, many other uh, plants. Mm. So I think that's the uh, the the needs for that uh, that period. Mm. But cer certainly he is not alone. I mean, in the world, it's not him alone that are trying to develop hybrid rice, but others as well. So how do you see that wave of, uh, re you know, agricultural revolution taking place in the world? Of course, uh, Professor Yuan is a pioneering figure in that. Uh, Mr. Shu, once again, it's not a story uh, just limited I, I to China, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, um, what I remembered, the, you know, the history of the Green Revolution is actually start from the Second World War. Mm. So after the Second World War, because of, of the, you know, the needs of the, uh, the you know, the, the world needs to go back to the normal. And also more people who will move into the city. So the requirements to, for more uh, production for rice, for wheat, uh, is rising at that time. And also more people moving into the cities, urbanization, and the, also the industrialization needs more materials for uh, from the agriculture yeah. uh, agriculture industry. So I think all that is the background of the the wave. Mm. Having said that, though, it was about hybrid rice of his generation that's really making tremendous change in the world. But now, what kind of agricultural technologies are we talking about? Thinking about the next jump from uh, onward from now, uh, Ms. Zhang. Um, you know, um, yearly agricultural scientists can have three targets in mind. The first one is to have high yield varieties. The second is to, you know, have high quality, to be more nutritional, uh, to have more nutritional value and to be more uh, tastier. And the third one, you know, we need to have varieties to be resistant to different climate environment and also resistant to diseases and uh, pests. Nowadays, the situation is changing a lot. You know, agriculture is becoming more multi-planary. You know, we need advanced devices like artificial intelligence and the GPS technology and the sensors. You know, mm -hmm. this not only reduce the rural workers' burden, but can greatly improve the efficiency and the profits of modern farms and also to make agriculture more environmentally friendly. Mm. Mr. do you agree with that? Uh, in your shared farm uh, in uh, a rural part of Beijing, uh, you are trying to practice a very different way, isn't it? Yeah, actually, uh, my farm is an ecological farm, and we uh, mainly uh, our practice and also our uh, technology is mainly based on how to build a uh, biodiversity in the farm and also using the you know some insects will uh, have their enemies so we will use the uh, the real nature's way to uh, keep our uh, plants more healthy and also uh, for the environment but also for for people so i think i i, I remember the when i doing research uh, you know there's a background uh, in the world that from the 80s actually uh, Japan they already changed their policy their uh, central policy uh, agri especially agri policy into more uh, sustainable way of farming and in the 80s in the 90s the European Union also changed their policy the uh, is you know is well known for common agriculture policy. Mm -hmm. uh, they changed their policy from uh, only f uh, focus on the productivity of agriculture into uh, more focus on multi-function of agriculture. You know, agriculture is not only a uh, industry that, uh, you know, uh, feed our uh, nation, uh, feed the world or the people, yeah. but also, you know, it's a, a, a good, it's good for education to labor, laborment and also good for is also important for the environment. So okay. there is multifunction for agriculture. So it seems that you have a somewhat a different opinion compared to Miss Zhang, don't you? 
I think there are two trends. Two trends uh, is compelling. To put it politely, you know. okay, Miss Zhang, mm. how would you respond to that? You know, the Shiyan, she's talking about, uh -huh. you know, the ideal format that she sees in agriculture. Uh, that seems to be not necessarily correlated with what you have just prescribed. How do you see this debate? You know, agriculture certainly need to be um, diversified. We need, we need different types of agriculture, not just one type. Mm. Um, you know, eco-friendly agriculture certainly is the future trend. However, you know, the modernization process is unavoidable, I think. Um, we need more job opportunities and for rural workers and of course you know we still need more outputs to feed the large population uh, so eco-friendly you know small scale farming subsistence agriculture is good you know it can be fun <laughs> if we can uh, work on it every urban citizens would like to have a piece of land <laughs> and <laughs> yes that, that that's a kind of fashion now uh, however if we think massively from macro mm. level we still need modernization to promote agriculture development mm. we need uh, science and technology mm. Well, Miss Shi, your thing is just fun, according to Miss Zhang. <laughs> uh, I have some different opinions. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, uh, from the, the the statistics of the uh, the food and the tr uh, and the agriculture uh, of the UN United Nations, actually, eighty percent of our food in the world are produced by small scale farmers. Mm -hmm. And also, if we see the, you know, in a long term, uh, actually sustainable agriculture, ecological agriculture is really, I think, the way to feed the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we o only see this in 50 years or 100 years, maybe the, uh, you know, the, the modern agriculture ha can feed the world. But actually, if we, f we see the, 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 our environment and also the earth in, a, you know, in 500 years or 1,000 years, I think we must re really focus on a good soil, good environment, because that, that, uh, that resources can't be replaced by other materials. Mm -hmm. And also we have a, a, a kind of a number at my farm. Actually, my farm has 300 mu. Uh, it's about 20 hectares. And we have uh, now 60, 60 people working at the farm. So actually, mm -hmm. uh, I think ec ecological agriculture is a good way for employment uh, because it's a more uh, inten uh, labor intensive, can, uh, especially can provide more em employment at the mm. farm. That's mm. the, the, uh, our practice. Mm. Ms. Zhang, Ms. Shi mm -hmm. seemed to have very well-prepared remarks regarding uh, how to argue back. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't see the big divergence be between us. You know, I think we need both and a different context, you know, meet different types of agriculture. And uh, for this kind of eco-friendly subsistence farming system, it's certainly needed. But for many people, and especially if we think of the situation in agriculture, we actually are implementing a kind of development project in Africa, try to promote labor intensive agriculture, maize production technology. And we found we actually the local farmers uh, are having quite a lot of complaints um, to say that, you know, in China, actually, your agriculture is already very ha, has been very modern it's kind of you use quite a lot of machines now you are still you know ask us to work more in the field mm -hmm. by you know using traditional method to mm. do weeding land preparation we think it's not fair for those people to live that way you know in a modern world since we have this kind of modern technology i think sometimes with new technology with uh, science we can solve this kind of dilemma between you know the environment and human resources to see a, a, a middle way and to you know to to tailor made different 
um, uh, technologies to cater for the interest of local people. You will know, for technology, many, mm, yeah. will technology uh -huh. solve all the problems, Ms. Shi? Um, I think tech for, even for the definition of technology, we have, uh, we can have the, you know, the modern uh, technology, but also we need, also need the wisdom, you know, the, uh, even the, uh, the, you know, some of the, our technology in the past, mm. uh, especially the, uh, you know, the dam of uh, the Chengdu in the Chengdu Dujiang, Dujiang dam uh, is already feed our people, especially for the uh, Chengdu people for thousands of years. I think that kind of te technology is real uh, benefit for uh, all the humankind. Mm. But not only uh, technology is not only refers to some, uh, you know, refers to only to the E, uh, e kind of on, or, you know, uh, online, uh, that kind of technology mainly, m maybe only uh, benefit for uh, s several people or f a few people. Mm. Ms. Zhang, I know mm -hmm. you understand totally what uh, Ms. Shu is trying to convey here, the technologies that goes with the uh, ecological circumstances, it seems that, mm. that she was trying to suggest, uh, uh, mm. so that you would make quote unquote little efforts, but the real legacy of those efforts will be felt generations to come. Your thoughts? Mm. Yeah, I, I strongly believe, you know, um, everything has two coins. Technology um, is the same, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. Uh, sometimes it can bring some uh, negative impact, but sometimes it can, it, we cannot ignore uh, the positive uh, effect it can bring to people. So to solve this problem, we cannot ask people to go back to their traditional life. Sometimes, you know, we can, we can do that, but not, it's not the main trend, I think. Uh, I strongly, I also believe in, um, you know, green agriculture. And uh, I, I, I certainly believe by using proper technology mm -hmm. uh, and we can solve the problem of a high polluted agriculture. I you see. know, this kind of the problem caused by extensive agriculture. Mm. So, so uh -huh. before we go, I do want to ask another question, which is crucial, you know, talking about China's circumstances, China already bidding goodbye to the extreme poverty. You see the whole nation's uh, living standards coming to another level. You also have the national policy, which is called uh, uh, rural area revitalization. Uh, so how is agriculture, technologies of agriculture, formats of agriculture likely to be interacting with all these tremendous change, bring it to a higher level, better quality, you know, more interacted with people's real lives. These kind of agriculture, uh, tell us where, what can it take to get there? Uh, Ms. Zhang. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we need different different types of agriculture, right. not just l one type of large scale modern agriculture. We also need subsistence agriculture. We also need uh, rurality, sense of rurality, right? And we really need to emphasize the multifunction of agriculture to release the potential of rural areas and to try to make rural areas more attractive to young people. I think that's very important for um, rural vitalization mm -hmm. um, and, and also you know for um, agricultural scientists and we need to realize you know agricultural sector is very different from other sectors you cannot have a co kind of short-sighted um, benefits just mm -hmm. like you cannot get quick benefits we need someone who know, who understand agriculture, you know, to know how to reserve soil, how to protect the environment, yeah. how to use agriculture technology mm -hmm. to achieve food security without to damage the environment, right? So, so, so these are very important. I think we, we need to believe in science technology. All right. And uh, Professor Yuan is a good example. You know, he's a man full of imagination, and his dream is to 
um, to enjoy the shadow of rice, right? Rice plant someday. Yeah, with this kind of audacious um, imagination, I think, you know, we can be creative to find solutions right. to solve the problem of agricultural development and Ms. rural Shi. revitalization. Okay, mm -hmm. Ms. Shi, what is your dream? Uh, how is it related to what the general topic we're talking about? Better quality of food, nutrition for the Chinese population, and rural revitalization? Uh, actually, I t about Two years ago, I went to Hunan province and uh, had the interview with uh, Yuan Long, Mr. Yuan Longping. Uh, I, I still remember the core question that we talk about is, uh, was, uh, you know, who will be the farmer uh, in the future growing uh, our land in China? And also he uh, was also worried about this issue. Uh, I think for the rural revitalization, the main question for the, the policy is how we can make the rural can be very attractive right. for young people. Uh, especially in my team, you know, in my team we have uh, about 60 people working at the farm and half of, the, of our team is, uh, we can call it, is they are young and new farmers. I think for them, the one of the attractive thing for them to come to the farm to work is to, you know, it's a new lifestyle. Uh, and also in the, uh, when they're living at the farm, they, they, are, they don't feel it, they are far away from the city uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, they can use cell phones, they can make orders from online. They, they even don't need to go to supermarket to buy anything. They can use uh, online right. shopping to get what they need. So when they, when they living at the rural, they don't feel their co uh, co uh, quality of their life is lower than in the city. Even you know they have bigger rooms to live, they have better quality of food, they they live very near to where they work. Actually, I think in the future this will be uh, okay. they need also they need technology for their uh, for their life needs mm -hmm. and also for our farm uh, the. We use also online uh, online store to connect directly with uh, the city consumers. All right, I, think I can that's tell. Part of the yeah. technology. Yeah. I can tell that you are very enthusiastic about the format of agriculture that you are doing right now. Uh, we'll see how things will develop. Uh, but for now, I want to thank both of you for bringing us a diversity of ideas. Professor Yuan Longping certainly is a legend of his field. And his legend is going to be great inspiration for many of us to look for new innovative ways to developing agriculture. Thank you so much, Zhang Chuanhong, Shi Yan. Ladies, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.